I have a huge announcement to make. Before we get into how old this government is, I have a huge show announcement to make. I am going to be stepping down from my role as the host of the show, and my son, my 13-year-old son, is going to be taking over. He's going to host the show from now on. Oh, you don't like that? Doesn't sound like a good idea. I'm kidding, by the way. I'm not stepping down. I'm not going anywhere. But why did you react that way? Why does it sound like a good idea? Do you have something against my son? No, I'm kidding. I know why you have something against that. It's nothing personal against my son. He's 13. How is a 13-year-old, given his age, going to wake up every single day and digest all the news stories and go through this site and this facts and this and then try to figure out what he's seeing, come up with some idea for the show, work with the show's producer, then get on here and try to give people maybe some help and some direction on how to think about things. He can't do it. And you know what's wild? My 13-year-old is a wildly capable young man. Of course. He could never do it. Why? Not because he's stupid. He's very smart. It's because he's 13. You see, age does matter. It matters a lot. Everyone has known this forever. Societies throughout the history of mankind have had very specific rules about age. When you are this age, you must do this. When you are this age, you must stop doing that. When you are this or that, at this age, you must resign from this military post or this post and go do this. When you're a boy, once you turn nine, you must. Age limits are a thing for a reason because every person isn't able to do everything at every age. And I know this namby-pamby, touchy-feely society we have now, we have to tell everyone at all times, oh, you can do anything you want to do. That's a lie. I can't go play in the NBA. I'm 6'8", and I can't go play in the NBA. You know why? It's not just because I'm unathletic and slow. I'm too old. I can't keep up with a bunch of 18, 19, 20-year-olds. I'm too old, so I can't do it. There's such a thing as being too old. That doesn't mean old people are bad. In fact, I think as a nation, we frankly neglect old people, and I think it's a disgrace. We neglect, we miss out on so much with them, our time, their wisdom. But when you're too old, you shouldn't be running the greatest country on the planet. You have no business running the country. And more than just it being embarrassing for the country, more than it being embarrassing for you, more than it being damaging for our own internal policy. We have to always consider this. There's one of these things about the world that you really realize when you read history books. You must consider this at all times. How the world thinks of you is as important as what you actually are. What do I mean by that? Pause. Sorry, we're going to do one more thing before we go to Joe Biden. What do I mean by that? If you're uh, an Assyrian king, you're in charge of the Assyrian Empire, and this, this, uh, this city that you've taken over before, they, you, you're in charge of them now. They rebel. They rebel. Well, the Assyrians, they would go to these rebellious cities, and they would do horrific things to people. They would lay siege to the city, then they go in, and it's all the medieval stuff you can imagine and worse. They're skinning people alive. One story I can think of, they were hanging the skins from the city walls, just horrible stuff. Why, though? Gosh, were these just a bunch of sadists? Why? Well, they wanted word to spread to the other cities, to the people around them. Don't mess with me. They're sending a message. Remember, what the other cities, what people around you think of you is critically important to your safety and security. And towards the end, towards the end when the Assyrian Empire was crumbling and these cities were rebelling and they weren't getting their rebellions put down, what happened? It inspired this city to rebel and this city to rebel. What changed? How you were perceived changed. When Joe Biden speaks, the world is watching, and it's very, very dangerous to have a president who speaks like this. For, and uh, I see, I'm just following my orders here. Uh, Staff, if anybody haven't spoken to uh, I ain't calling on you. I'm calling on you. I said they had five questions. Anita from VOA. He may have a game plan. He just hasn't shared it with me. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. 
the best way to get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to anyway from from uh, uh, Char excuse me from Charlotte one uh, another line going from in, in Florida down to Tampa of Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah, Los Angeles and uh, and uh, um, uh, um, what am I doing here? I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but look, it's not funny. It's not. Obviously, we get a snicker out of these things. <laughs> anyway, but the world is watching. And the world is licking their chops. When they see a government like this, a president like this, they're licking their chops. And don't think it's just about Joe Biden. Don't, don't. Uh, Dianne Feinstein, she's a United States senator from our most powerful state. California is our largest, most powerful state. Being a United States senator from California is a really, really, really big deal. That's a lofty, important position. Dianne Feinstein has to be told by her staffers how to vote. And when I say how to vote, I mean simply saying I. Clerk will call the roll. Senator Feinstein. Um, you say I. Pardon me? I. Yeah. Uh, to say. I, I would like to support a yes vote on this. Um, it provides $823 billion. That's an increase of $26 billion for the Department of Defense, and the, it funds priorities submitted. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. It's not funny. I know everyone, ha ha, it's funny. No, we don't just need functional adults. We need our best people in that position. Instead, we have Dianne Feinstein, who is practically a fossil. Over 20 members of Congress, over 80. Over 80. You know how old Bernie Sanders is? He's not even in the top 10. It's a national disgrace. The most powerful Republican in Washington, D.C. is Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell can't give basic TV interviews and answer basic questions without freezing up. Just look at this. Bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, <laughs> Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Yes. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Penny. I get people asking me all the time what I think about term limits. I'm okay with them. I, I'm okay with them. I've always been more on the American people need to step up and stop voting for these people train, but I'm okay with them. You want to pass it, fine, but what about age limits? And again, I know we live in this touchy-feely society where you're supposed to say everyone can do everything, but that's not true, and historically people have understood that that's not how mankind works. Why? Why don't we have age limits? Why is it radical to say you must be between the age of 40 and 65 to serve in the government? For too long, we've been led to believe that communism is a thing of the past. But the truth is, communism is alive. It's here, and it's infiltrating every aspect of American life. Introducing the Anti-Communist Manifesto by Jesse Kelly, the practical guide for patriots ready to defend our nation from its most dangerous enemy. Discover the shocking extent of communist infiltration in our education system, their alliance with American corporations, and the twisted truth behind environmentalism.
This eye-opening book exposes the true face of communism and empowers you to fight back. Join the fight for freedom. Pre-order your copy of the Anti-Communist Manifesto today by going to jessekellybook.com.